Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching another episode of What's Next Podcast. I am joined by the one and only Winston Guy, former NFL player, Lexington, Kentucky native, University of Kentucky alumni. Winston, man, thank you so much for joining our podcast, man. I'm, I'm excited, man. We're here at Lexington Catholic High School. This is where it all started, man. Walk with me as I do with every guest. We start off the episode just to get to know our guests a little bit more and get to know their personality, man. So what are some fun things you like to do outside of football? I know you're you're very connected to the sport itself, but what are some fun things you like to do outside of f- football? Um, I mean, I'm still uh, into fitness, so I yeah. still work out, still try to keep body and shape man to to keep up with the young 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 kids and yeah. the generation so i also uh help with coaching yep. uh down in jacksonville florida okay. um where i've been living at for a while uh just trying to get a little bit more acclimated uh with the community there um i also had an opportunity to play yeah. with the jacksonville jaguars so i really kind of made a home yeah. there for over the years now so. i know you're back here in lexington and it's always a good feeling to be back man but what what does it feel like to actually be back in your hometown here in lexington catholic you came here to help a little bit with the football camp <laughs> i mean it kind of feels surreal um, just like in the past i've always wanted to try to develop my own personal uh uh sports summer camp right here for the kids this is where it all started yes it is and yes, it for is. me um, I'm just kind of humbled, man, to be in this position, to be able to give back to my yeah. community, get back to where it, where I actually started here. Yep. Now I got my own training brand I'm building up called Athlete U. So yep. I want to implement yep. that part with the school. And I just want to be able to be a big help because just, you know, I wish I had somebody like me growing up. You to know, look up a, to. A man. lot of my skills yeah. come from backyard sports, you yep. know, playing in the community where I'm from. Um, I grew up in Winburn, so man, it's just kind of surreal just coming back here and giving back, and man, it's just a happy moment for me. And fires it over the middle, it's picked off! And the Guy. interception is made by Winston Guy. Winston Guy, who's, you know, he's got experience, has been a really good special teams guy. It basically has to be that third safety right now. Good play by Winston. Really good play, and on top of that, very timely. Yeah, he came down really, really hard here. Came right down, undercut the uh, the crossing pattern, which you have to do. Terrific play. Turns the field over early here for the Colts. Like I said, we're back again with another episode of What's Next Podcast. I'm joined by Winston Guy, like I said, former NFL player. Big time star here in the Lexington community. Um, welcome back to Lexington, my man. I know you're here for a little bit, you know, uh, for the Lexington Catholic High School football camp. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to be back? We we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I guess, what was the camp like for you, man? You, you, you're the sole representative of the camp. How, what was it like? Um, the camp was a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I kind of was in talks with some closest people that works in this program, Yeah. Uh, with the football program, and um, I always visualize myself having, like, one of my first football camps here. Yeah. So um, technically, you know, this was the school's uh, summer camp. So, you know, just having good relationships with people in here, yeah. I figured I have an opportunity to come back um, pretty much like right as soon as my kids graduated. So yeah. that's kind of like right at the beginning of summer. So I just want to have an opportunity to come back, you know, yeah. show my face, you know, um, you know, be able to try to uh, show off my brand and stuff like that. So yeah. I've been building my brand, my uh, athlete youth sports. The saying of it is just the athlete way of life, yeah. you know, so it's more than just being an athlete. So I just figured, you know, I gave myself an opportunity to network with people. Uh, I met the head coach here, the new head coach that's um, here, and I met the athletic director. Okay. here as well so i'm um, just trying to network and be connected a little bit more i mean i have but i just want to have a, a great resource here yeah. as far as when i have my future camps man i want to be able to give back to the community you yeah. know all over yeah. the city yeah. of lexington i love that man well why does i guess you said give back to the, the the community here in lexington and you're a lexington native of course why does that matter to you so much to give back to the community because it's a lot of athletes that you know make it to a certain point and i'm not saying that they don't try to give back but it's not the first thing in their mind at least for you you're 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 retired and you're always looking back you're always looking for the community um that where you came from which is lexington why does that matter to you so much it matters to me because um, you know, I felt 
a victim to sports at a young age. Yeah. You know, my father always used to tell me, like, man, you had a football in your hand, like, since you was, like, three and four years old. Yeah. So, you know, just growing up, it was just old school way of, like, life of being, you know, playing sports. Yeah. So, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, I was a three-sport athlete. And I played baseball, basketball, and I played football. So that was my whole entire life and career besides, you know, being a student too, yeah. going through like all of my life. And, you know, I grew up out in Winburn. Yeah. So um, a lot of people that came from that area has yeah. been successful. Certain people that's come out of that area for me has been successful in life and you've had an opportunity to interview them Absolutely. you know so um shout out to those guys being able to um create something yeah from somewhere man and be just because i say that because we have the resources that kids have today mm -hmm. so a lot of things that we had to develop as kids as far as sports was playing on the street playing basketball in the middle of the road playing <laughs> football in somebody's backyard yeah. going up to the park you know what I'm saying? Winburn Park and playing shooting hoops, playing baseball in the middle of the middle of the neighborhood. Yeah. Ten of us out there, the whole neighborhood is on the block. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was our way of implementing ourselves into getting better at sports. Yeah. We didn't have camps, you know what I'm saying, like that. Like I play AAU basketball and a lot of our skills came from practice or yeah. backyard sports. Yeah. So just having an opportunity for the the young generation to be able to have camps yeah skills training trainers you know what i'm saying sports trainers or trainers in general is like one of the biggest industries right now in the world yeah you know it's more than what it used to be so now you have all these parents that are soccer moms you know they sports moms sports dads <laughs> yeah. sports uncles all this stuff now you have all the resources now because you got instagram you got Twitter, you got Facebook. Social media, social media. It's a social media world. Yeah. Back when I was coming up, we didn't have that. that. So everything was behind the scenes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even just having somebody that was implemented here from Lexington, we didn't have those resources to go to a training facility. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or we didn't have somebody like me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Being able to, hey, come train with me. What you doing over the summer? You know what I'm saying? Come train with somebody that's actually been there and done that. But now the world and the sports world is totally different than how it was when I was growing up. So I take it with pride because now I want to be able to teach the younger generation what it's like being an athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kids are a lot more smarter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got their not all the way figured out, but they have ideas. They like, have okay, this idea. is what I want to do. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So just stand out the streets. You know what I'm saying? Falling victim to society and just like, you know, being a product of our environment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up in a married structure home mm -hmm. with my mom and dad and my little sister. That was my immediate family. So for me, I grew up in a balanced structure home. Yeah. And most of the people that I grew up with in my community at Winburn didn't have fathers. Mm -hmm. So to make everything, you know what I'm saying? And one is my father was a big part of the community my dad was a coach yeah, right, you know right. what i'm saying he was a coach he was a husband and he was a working man so he wore a lot of hats yeah. you know what i'm saying he was the, he was the main main provider yeah. of you know what i'm saying the family and my mom was a cosmetologist so she okay. did hair for a living so you know my dad had an opportunity to play um at a black college here at Kentucky State. Kentucky State University. Yeah. Um, so, you I, know, uh, he got lured into that. I, I always like, how you get to go? To, why you go to Kentucky State? Yeah. He really wanted to go to Ohio State. He had like a half scholarship to Ohio State, but I guess it's, you know my family and stuff wanted him to stay home, so he decided to go here. You know, and my sister actually graduated from Kentucky State too. Okay, cool, cool. As well, yeah. So, um, you know, and I'm the only family member from my entire family on both sides to go to a power five college university of kentucky you know what i'm saying so yeah. university of kentucky we're going to talk a little bit about university of kentucky but we're here at lexington catholic i guess to bring you know the story a little bit back um why did you decide to come to lexington catholic i think it was already planned for me you know my dad worked here so yeah. my dad worked in this school system um he was a janitor here for years before I even came here. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, man, it was just unique. I was always over here. You know what I'm saying? For real, I thought Catholic was a college. <laughs> I thought it was a college because coming over here, the school was so big. Yeah. I was a little kid in like a big world. Right, so right, right. I always hung around the basketball team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was really never around the football, football program. Guys, yeah. I always see the basketball team and there have been some great basketball players that came from this program. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like they won stay Switch 16. Like I was always used to go in the locker room and I was like a kid in the candy store. I used to just hang out, felt part of the team, hang yeah, out. You yeah. know, and like I used to watch the N one mixtapes. Yep, I know those. On ESPN yeah. in there. So I was always with my dad, I would help my dad clean and stuff like that. I would stay up here for hours. I, I think my dad wanted me to come here just to give me a better opportunity to be able to not ex- only excel at sports, but academics. academics. You know, my dad would always he cared about grades more than anything. So he always, that was always a big, big, big implement yeah. for me growing up as a kid was grades, grades, grades. Of course. You know, so. You gotta, you gotta have the grades, right? To, mm-hmm. The education is just as important as the athletics. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the athletics. Um, uh, state championships. You won two here. You won your sophomore year, won your senior year. What was that moment like to be a state champion and bringing Lexington Catholic its first state championship from the football program? These right here, these two. Uh, big photo pictures right here is our only two state championships here at Lexington Catholic High. And this is our first championship that we had in 2005. Yeah. This was my like sophomore year, really. So this is picture of me, man. With there the he is. Cut. There he is, man. Shortcut. <laughs> young, young Winston, man. My coach right here. This was, uh, this is Coach Bob Spire. Yep. He was the head coach. This was Coach Kevin Brueggemann. He was my uh, position coach yep. when I was here. Uh, right here, this is Coach uh, Bill Letton. He's yeah. the one that took over when Coach Spire uh, left here to go coach, I think, in North Gwinnett okay. in okay. Georgia. Yeah. And, man, Coach Engler, Coach Hobbs, Coach Smith. Oh, man. This is uh, Mr. Fryer. He helped with the community. A lot of these people kind of yeah. took care of me here. Yeah, it's your family. So uh, your family outside your family. Year, so our first state. This is our actually first state, state championship, championship man. ever in this program. Then fast forward to 2007. Yeah. This was my senior year. And I'm up here, right up here in the corner. Yeah. I had the dreads, man. So that's me right up here in the corner. <laughs> so. This is my my man. I went out my senior year with a bang. Yeah, you had so to. So this you was to. this was a super super uh, special moment for me. And um, man, I just see all these coaches. There was yeah. Coach Kelly right there. That was the one I took. Look how young he was. Fresh out of rugby. <laughs> he was Fresh big. out of he rugby, was, right? He was swollen in. Yeah. Man, he came in here in this program. He was, Tore this thing up. This weight room was not like how not it is. Not like how so it is now, man. We made this thing sweaty. Yeah. It had a different. This place had a different smell to yeah. it, and all. So it's different, man. So I can tell. You know, this program is came a long way. So we trying to just continue to build here, man. Of course, we man. Need more, we need more state championships at the school because this, this program is going to produce a lot of great athletes. Not great just athlete. football, but. Yeah. Basketball, baseball. You yeah. know, there's people that's been had an opportunity to play pro. Yeah play in college so yeah. man this is this is a great school this is what made me for sure man a lot of history that that we're looking at right now man and um my uh my freshman year here um i played quarterback yeah okay so they had me quarterback man i thought i was the next mike vick because i'm left i'm left-handed so i played quarterback here man my uh freshman year for the jv team yeah um this was a big program when i first came in here so just physically, I wasn't ready to play varsity. Yeah. So I had to go through a Develop, year of develop development, a, a program yep, yep. with the weightlifting. So um, that was a challenge because there was a lot of players on our team that was seniors. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, it put a lot of pressure on, on a lot of younger players that was able to have an opportunity to play. Right, right. right. You know, so with that man like i just wanted to play you know i felt like i was good enough i felt like i could compete i felt like i could be able to play with the with the big boys, big boys. 
and we played against solid teams here. Yeah. My sophomore, sophomore year, year, we went 14-1. It's pretty, pretty damn good. We made it to the uh, state championship. And I think what gave us a boost we that was our first year what we seen on the picture that was our first yeah. year implementing the black uniforms okay it was the black that's why y'all yeah were so they came out with the black unis <laughs> it was a black uniform and we black. um we played against bowling green okay and bowling green was like the best team at the time like the oh that was tough powerhouse okay. so when we looked at both like man this team is huge but we were like when we got them black unis all uh, the swag came in man we was just like i mean we like the coaches they came out with the black uniforms probably like 20 minutes before the game. Wow. They brought them out, everybody threw them on. I had a game-changing play yep. in that game my sophomore year. I picked up a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Yeah. And that was kind of like my stamp so, on just like getting ready to go into like my junior year I'm and being now. like a full-time starter. Now you're, you're top three uh, player in the state. This is what your your sophomore year, you're going into your top three, you know, by your senior year, you're, you're a top prospect in the state of Kentucky. University of Kentucky football. Why did you decide to go to UK? Did you have any other offers, any other schools that you were looking at? And walk me through your thought process at the time. Um, to be honest with you, Kentucky was not even on my radar. Okay. I mean, just because I grew up a basketball fan here. <laughs> yeah. Like, Kentucky wasn't really like, something that intrigued me here in my hometown like i grew up a diehard kentucky fan man so uh man i love tubby smith when he was here so yeah. i've been to a lot of games mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying as a kid i grew up a real diehard kentucky basketball so football wasn't even like a thing here in my hometown man i i grew up really liking ohio state miami yeah and that was like my two teams like i was like i'm either going to ohio state or Miami. Miami, right? Not like, that Kentucky's not even a. <laughs> I didn't think I wanted to be part of the Buckeyes, which made sense because at the time Kentucky football wasn't you know as known as it is today. Yeah. So that, that definitely this was makes the basketball. Sense. Yeah, it was basketball, basketball school. Yeah. With just Kentucky recruiting, it wasn't like a big recruiting state. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we like kind of bottom on the radar, finding an unless. You're a five-star recruit. Exactly. But mostly, if you're a five-star recruit, you have to be invited to most of these camps. You got to pretty much expose yourself. Yeah. So it's different than how it was then than yeah. it is now. So yeah. I was, like, when I was in high school, I went to a Cincinnati camp for, like, a day. Went yeah. up there and killed it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had an opportunity. Um, Arkansas gave me a scholarship going into my senior year. Before Arkansas, it was Kentucky came in the picture, Middle Tennessee State, uh Akron yeah and Cincinnati Bearcats yeah I went to Cincinnati I went down there and I destroyed that camp okay and I was like man the facility was nice the running back coach I can't remember his name the running back coach at the time uh was recruiting me uh -huh. and I was like man since he's nice like I really was considered going to Cincinnati yeah but so. what happened here's the story right here what happened is at the time uh coach um Rich Brooks, yeah. at the time that was coaching at Kentucky for a while, Coach Rich Brooks and Coach Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith, he's a legend in, in, in the state of Kentucky. Give you a quick background, Chuck Smith was my recruiter. Okay. And he was the head coach for her, uh, Boyle County. He won, he won like five state championships for Boyle at County. Boyle County okay. before he left to coach at Kentucky. Yeah. So Coach Smith and Coach Rich Brooks came in my home. That was the only college to come and sit down with me, my mom, and my dad. That's what's up. And they recruited me. And Coach Brooks was like, man, I want your son. I want him to come play. He said he going uh, he gonna to have an opportunity to play as a true freshman, but he got to earn it. He was an old school coach. And um, I had an opportunity, you know, to visit and stuff. Yeah. I didn't even think about coming to Kentucky. <laughs> and, like, I'm going to mention names that yeah. you probably heard, but people that are are big with just the program of Kentucky. Only reason why I came to Kentucky is because of Wesley Williard and Stevie Johnson. 
Okay. Stevie is um he got drafted to the Buffalo Bills. He had a nice long career. He played with the Bills, the Chargers, yeah. and the 49ers. He's from he's from California. He's from the Bay. Okay. So in Wesley Williard, he's from LaGrange, Georgia. That okay. was a big pipeline recruiting uh high school for Kentucky. Yeah. So he was a big reason why I came to Kentucky. Kentucky. Uh, when we had our signing day here, I committed to go to Kentucky. So yeah. That's it was special, a, it was a big thing yeah, for special. not just me but for my family. Family, family you know. Man. So just being a hometown kid, man. Hometown kid, man. I, what, what was the pressure like? I guess like did did you look at it like that? Did you feel any time any type of hometown pressure? No. Okay. Okay. I had no pressure because I knew what work I put in with little resources. Yeah. Now you have resources that you feel. You, what I'm you saying. Got, yeah. Like yeah. I would always come out here on the field and work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even when I committed at Kentucky, like teammates that I played with in the spring, when we ain't no football, we just lifting, we'll go out on the field, do one-on-ones. That's good. You feel what I'm saying? Like we couldn't stop staying from the facility. That's good. Man. Like that was like home for us. Like we weren't <laughs> hanging out in, in our dorms yeah. unless we was chilling. Yeah. But other than that, we were like, hey man, what you doing? Shoot, we'd be like five, six of us go up or working out. We, we already lifted weights in the morning. We out two, three in the afternoon. It's working. hot as hell. Working. One on ones. Man. You feel me? And that was like natural. We because most of it, we loved football. What's your, I guess, biggest, best moment at the University of Kentucky? And I hate to, I hate to bring it down to one, one specific moment. But was there a moment that stood out to you that you will always remember being a part of the University of Kentucky football program? Man, that's a tough question. Yeah. I think probably the biggest moment, besides just playing through those years, I think it was my freshman year. Mm -hmm. My freshman year, uh, it's funny, I'm gonna give you a story. People laugh at me all the time. Like, man, for you to be so fast, like how you get caught by the kicker? Yeah. So like my freshman year, that's why I was I wore number 19 then. Okay. So um, my freshman year, we played against Georgia and I got the record for the longest kick return without a touchdown score. Okay. So I caught it in like the 102 yard line. So that's like two yards inside the right, touchback. Right. Yeah. I got all the way down to like the three yard line, man. I ran yeah. out of gas. Ran out of gas. <laughs> Bro, just weaving, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you get excited, yeah. like the adrenaline starts pumping in, like your body starts tensing up. Yeah. Like when you in those moments, like you gotta be relaxed. Like you gotta be really enjoying the process. I was so excited. I was trying to chug and tense, man. Yeah. Like I was weaving with one of my players. Uh, who was it? EJ, EJ Adams. Uh, man, we was running. I was trying to boom. I cut in. I seen the kicker come in and he hit me and I fell. I laid on the ground full of, I was dead tired. <laughs> but that was kind of really like my implement of just like, you know, starting my career really, yeah. you know, and like after my freshman year, man, like, uh, cause I came in as an athlete at Kentucky. Yeah. So when I first came in, they, I played corner. Okay. And I never okay. played that position here at Catholic, you Catholic. know what I'm saying? I played a hybrid position here. So I didn't really know how to play corner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't a position that I trained or worked for when I was here all right. four years. I was an athlete, a kick return, punt return, running back, receiver, everything, whatever coach need me to make a play, I was always there. I was always available. Like yeah. I was always accessible. NFL. One of the, the NFL's expectations really become realistic for you. I guess growing up, you always think, you know, you play a sport, you want to go pro. But I guess when did it hit you that you legit had a chance to, to be an NFL player? Um, man, I would have to say, uh, going to my junior year. Yeah. I was hearing my name and stuff. My junior year, that was 2011. 11. That was the year of the NFL lockout. Ah. So I heard my name and stuff, and like, but mentally, I felt like I wasn't ready for the league. I felt like I needed another year. Okay. I felt like I needed that senior year to kind of go through the process. At least you know that though. Like. Yeah. yeah like I knew I wasn't. Honest with yourself. Yeah. I knew I wasn't like fully mentally developed as far as playing the game. Yeah. So I felt like I needed another year yeah. under my belt to be able to like understand more about football, more about playing a position. Yeah. Because I played four different positions, positions in four years. You know what I'm saying? So what my, are the positions you play? You play corner, corner, free safety, strong safety, and I play hybrid. I was like I, I was like a hybrid nickel outside linebacker. Yeah. 
So I played four different positions in four years. Every position was different. Like you weren't ready yet, and you were mature mature enough to notice that and, and be able to understand because there's not a lot of athletes, you know, understand that you know maybe I should take another year. I'm not ready yet. NFL may be looking at me, but I'm gonna pause because I want to still get better and I want to develop. I guess I guess what what was the feeling like, you know, at your senior year when you got drafted and you know you finished out that year out? Did you feel like you was ready to go then? Yeah, I felt like I was ready. Um, I left. Uh, um, Miss Barb Dennison. I'm mention her name because she was a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, she was one of the. Uh, she worked with the Cats, the Cats program, okay. um, down with the student athletes as far as tutoring. Okay. She had been there for years and years and years. That's what's up. And I remember, man, she's Miss Barb Dennison had been a big, big impact, man. I remember when I didn't have no car. She picked me up for summer school. Yeah. At my grandma's house. She picked me up from school, make sure I went to summer school. Like That's she up. knew a lot of, she was like the team mom. Yeah. Like she knew, especially, you know, me being from my hometown, man, she knew that uh, she loved me like a son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she wanted the best for me. And like, she knew a lot of struggles and stuff I yeah. had yeah. Yeah. through that process that I haven't even uh, really shared with you about just like some of the things that yeah. I had to go through through, you know what I'm saying, my career at Kentucky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff that happened, not, I mean, to me, but, you know, um, my mom had got in like a bad car wreck with my sister. This was while you're at Kentucky. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. my mom got in a bad car wreck and she was admitted into the hospital. Okay. And my mom and my sister almost lost their life. Oh my goodness. So, probably while my mom, you know, she was diagnosed with a brain aneurysm. Man. So when I was just growing up, like we've had like a couple of car wrecks growing up as a kid, and I always thought was that was one of the major things that caused my mom to have that. Have that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was a big impact for me. You know what I'm saying? Throughout like my career at College Kentucky. Career. Yeah. That happened to me like my sophomore year, really. That was early on. Yeah. You know, my mom wasn't the same. It took her a while to get back because yeah. like she went through the windshield. Man. So that was a big, big thing, and it was crazy because my dad actually was driving my mom down to Frankfort, Kentucky, to get her renew her license for her okay. cosmetologist. Okay. And it was driving in, you know, bad weather, and my dad lost. You know, it's tough going down there in Frankfort with just yeah, it's the, the slopes and stuff, and a lot of hills. Yeah. And, so yeah. they got into a bad wreck, and that moment happened to me. So there's different things that's happened to me over the course of, you know what I'm saying? Your career. My career, just not just college, but professional too. How do you deal well. with that though? Cause like you see it today, um, mental health doesn't, you know, get a lot of exposure as far as like uh, being in the media and people shining light on mental health with the athletes. You dealt with that yourself. Like that's tough, man. You're dealing with, you know, your <coughs> mom going through all of that. Um, and you still have to go out there and perform. How do you how do you even cope with that? How do you do that? Like with your mental health and it's such shambles where you're like, man, I, I got my mom to worry about, got my family in that, that situation, but I still gotta go out there and perform. How do you, how do, you do it? That was tough for me, man. Um, I was with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, when I went to Indianapolis from from Jacksonville, yeah. I, I was on a practice squad for the whole year with them before I actually was on the active roster that following year. Okay. My dad told me a story that was driving and my mom was complaining about she had a headache yeah. and she blacked out and she was unresponsive and okay. he drove her to the nearest uh, fire station and they had to admit her to the hospital. Okay. And when they put her in there, they did all the scannings and stuff and they said my mom had a brain aneurysm. Man. So they had to, when that moment happened, man, that was the first time in my life I ever heard my dad, his, his third, I've never seen my dad cry. Like mm -hmm. I've never seen my dad like, you know what I'm saying, like in that moment. So for me, I was shocked. I drove all the way from Louisville to the hospital. Yeah. And when I went in there, like, that's when like my life like flashed. It was like, it was so surreal because at that moment, you know, my mom, they had to cut my mom's skull, half her skull open. Mm -hmm. So they had a bunch of wires. She was iron, like, it was so unreal. You know what I'm saying? When my mom was admitted a brain aneurysm, she had a bad stroke behind it. 
So, you know, I stayed down here for like almost a week. Yeah. You know, I was in the hospital for like three days and get no sleep or Man. nothing. So it was just crazy how that situation happened. And that was kind of really the turning point of my life. My mom lived for probably like a year and a half before, but in reality, she was suffering. You yeah. know, my mom was a fried yeah. vegetable. Yeah. You know, she had a stroke. And like, my dad, <clears throat> I don't want to get too emotional, but. Nah, you're, you're fine. Oh, my bad. My dad, uh, you know, he took a big role. He uh, he yeah. lost his job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got laid off just having to take care of my mom. And my mom, you know, like, he had to take care of her by himself and my sister and try to have family members help. But he uh, he took a big, a big, you know what I'm saying, sacrifice. Oh, so facts, for facts. me, I kind of understood, like, I guess the the values of being a man. Yeah. Um, I guess being a husband and a father. So for me, it was tough. Yeah. Just to kind of like see him like that. Yeah. So I mean, he kind of kept me straight. Like football kind of was like an escape goal for me. So yeah. In reality, kinda. I didn't really have true closure. Yeah. You know, so like. At that moment, I know my dad was like, man, I know you had to go back home. I yeah. mean, I know you got to go back to Indy and stuff like that. So I was closer to home. Right. You know, so like for me, I think what made me lose the love for football, I guess at that moment in my life, was like, I felt like just another player to the NFL. So it's like, I started asking myself questions like how many of us has been through this situation. And no one, no one cares. No you know, and yeah. like, I kind of had anger towards just being a professional athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, over time, I kind of hated really being who I, not who I was, but just like that stigma. Cause they don't know like the outside part. Yeah. You feel me? And like to corporate, it looks good. The money, all that stuff. Yeah. Then you don't realize like, we're in a bubble, you feel what I'm saying? Like, we don't really have, like, no real social life. Yeah. In a way, we do, but we don't. Because this is a job, this is a career, so it's, like, 365 days a year. Yeah. So we only God. get a certain amount of time to really enjoy being a human. Yeah. And having life, having emotions. You know, as kids, we talk, oh, be tough. Be tough, be tough. You know, you're 22, 23 years old going yeah. into a, a billion-dollar corporation. They try to put you through all these different things and stuff and mental health wasn't even a big thing you get a concussion and you don't even want to go out Man. that's your job's on the line you, you get hurt you know what i'm saying concussion shoot like, oh shake it off we gotta go back that's, in that's crazy and you gotta <laughs> think and you gotta think like how many players in the past had to do that yeah you feel what i'm saying so like mental health has been a, like when my mom died and we laid her to rest she passed away I feel like a player. I just felt like a player instead of a person. Person. You know, I was like, that's not right. The coach's yeah. life was when I was coming back. Like, does that really matter? What if it took me two weeks? But in my mind, I two weeks, I ain't gonna have no job. Yeah. They're right now. They're they're practicing. We're in training camp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That happened to me in training camp. When my mom got sick and she died, that was the we was playing the. Uh, Green Bay Packers for the Hall of Fame game. Okay. And they end up canceling that game because when they painted the field, the paint clunked the turf together. So it's too hazardous for the players. Okay. So that was like a Hall of Fame. We went to go see Canton, Ohio. We had a chance to see the Hall of Fame, yeah. all that stuff. So it was big. Yeah. And we had people was getting inducted that whole weekend. Yeah. So my mom died that Saturday. That's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? So I went home that following Sunday. Cause they canceled the game, so you know that's when it happened, and you know just the grieving process. But like for me personally, it wasn't really grief. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was all like a blur. It happened so fast. Yeah. And once like I got hurt, I was dedicating my last. I was in my last year of my rookie deal, uh, with my contract, right. and I was going to. I was dedicating my season to my mom. To your mom. You know, and that happened. I got hurt. So, you feel me? And yeah. like. 
They cut. I got hurt first game on the season. I didn't even. They didn't even evaluate me. I didn't get an MRI or an X-ray. That's the big. That's a big part of the league. They try to do with players is try to hide their injuries. Oh, or really? try not to Yeah, they'll try not to let you get full evaluations because they don't want to cover the insurance. They'll rather get rid of you and have you pay for it out of your pocket instead of them fill it figuring out you got an injury that probably requires surgery. Oh, wow. Instead of them paying for it, you know what I'm saying? It's like the military. They really get rid of you. Hey, thank you. Have a nice life. You figure it out on your own. That's terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a lot to it. That's why I created Athlete, Athlete you, you because yeah. I want to be able to teach the generation everything that they're not going to tell you in the league. That's I sad, learned man. a lot more about everything that goes with the NFL after the league. Okay. And I was like, man, like this is a dirty business. It might look good. It looks it fun. Looks, it like, looks good on It's TV. an opportunity yeah. for people's lives. But the other stuff, they don't talk about it. Yeah. So now that's why you see more podcasts. You see more athletes talking about that's stuff. Sad. But the thing is, there's, there's more of me than there are of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not to take away from anybody, but there's more of me in this position yeah. than there's more of Brendan Marshalls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Richard Sherman's. And stars. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's more of those yeah. than there are. There's more. There's less of them. There's more of us. More of you guys. So we're, we go through the after effect. You feel what I'm saying? Just as far as career earnings. You know, I break it down like people think like 250,000 or 350 grand is a lot of money. It's really not. Yeah. You got to think of after taxes. You got to yeah, think of taxes. taking care of yourself, yeah. car insurance, groceries, all the stuff that normal people have to do on a day to day basis. These are finances. Yeah. And if you don't have nothing set up after the season, that's your paycheck. So if you play from week one all the way to week 17, that's just your salary for the year. When you go into the off season, you're not, they're not paying you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got a nonprofit organization, you got a tax write-off, you got yeah. stuff that's creating residual while you're not playing. So that's the reason why you got the NIL deals, all these things that's giving players opportunity to already have money yeah. in their pocket to go on and start setting them up for the future. Because will something happen? Injury. You know what I'm saying? That's why they have the players union that fights for the players in the league. Okay. So it's two different leagues. You got the NFL. <laughs> And then you got the NFL's players union. So you got the players union that tries to fight for the players with all their benefits. You know what I'm saying? Line of duty, uh, uh, workers comp, you know what I'm saying? Like pension, yeah. all these different other insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like you only, they only give you five years of insurance after you retire. You know what I'm saying? So once that five years is up, yeah. you got to pay for your own insurance. That's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's a lot yeah. more to just teaching kids. Yeah. Not and just and kids. Don't, kids don't know that. But either. not just so kids, like, teaching the parents. Yeah. Because it starts because if the parents can understand it, they can prepare the kids. They can prepare yeah. the kids. Yep. They can be like, okay, like this is what I want, this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I call it the LeBron James effect. Yeah. What he's doing, he's setting the generation up for what how it needs to be done. So now with you having a career in sports, all you gotta do is worry about ball. He don't got to worry about his family. He ain't yeah. got to worry about all that extra stuff that are distractions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the John Morant's of the world, the Zion Williamson's, all the <laughs> stuff they in the news for. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear those guys. You don't hear Jason Tatum. You don't no, hear you don't. you don't hear Damian Lillard. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear Jokic. You don't hear all these all these guys that are pretty much the face the of league. leagues. Yeah. They got it they got agencies. They got this. They got a camera. They got a videographer. All right, hey, we got um, interview at two to three. All right, that's part of your schedule. All right, boom, we training at this time. Yeah, this, everything's boom, planned everything's out. Planned yeah, out. Yeah. So now there's more resources now for athletes than it's ever been. Yeah. I didn't have those resources. So now it's my job to implement that so you get everything in one. Yeah. You feel what I'm sure. saying? You for get sure. a, right, You get a chance to live the way of the athlete life. I love the way that you're actually, you know, using your past experiences to help better the younger generation on the come up. I see, you know, what, what you're trying to do, and I love it. You know, I tip my hat off to you, man. That's wonderful. Because that. we need more athletes like yourself to do that. Um, talk a little bit more about athletes. You, um, what, 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 what is your future plans for that? I guess, like, what's the big picture plans for athletes? You, man, athlete, you. Um, it took a while for real to come up with this brand name. Yeah. Like when I retired. I always wanted to, uh, one of my biggest mentors, 
Um, his name is Cliff Marshall. Shout out to Cliff, man. Yeah. He's uh, Cliff Marshall was uh, he was a big time uh, athletic director performance yeah. for uh, a company called Ignition. Okay, it was called a Ignition APG, and um, basically, you know, that was a pharmaceutical company. Okay, that a man created a a, a sports institution. So the actual institution is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. But when I was coming out for the pre-draft for the combine, um, getting ready for the combine and stuff, they had uh, another. They had this a branch where he would take athletes to Naples, Florida, and that's where we would go. That's where I trained at. Trained. Okay. So instead of me going to Cincinnati, yeah. I trained down in Florida. Okay. So that's where I trained for the combine and everything at. So, but he was a big mentor to me because I remember. I remember to this day he said. You know, the moment you start working mm -hmm. with me and this and and me being, a, he's like, this is a lifetime relationship, and he meant that. And I still to this, I can pick up the phone, man. We'll click. But and he's a big believer in God. He was a spiritual guy, so That's we would always pray before our training. We would yeah. pray at lunch, at dinner. You know, he was with us every step of the way. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? So he's been a big mentor for me over these years. And I felt like, man, like that's something I wanted to do. That was like my niche. Yeah. I know I can coach. Like coaching is like easy for me. I know it's a process just wanting to develop and become a better coach. But I feel like for me, in my career where I'm at right now, you know what I'm saying, being 33, I feel like for me, I feel like I can touch the kids, the parents, the youth more by being accessible. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, instead of being behind yeah. the mask pretty much again but just the you know what i'm saying the headset and coaching that's another way of you know what i'm saying being implemented but i feel like i like the dirty work i like the grind like i like the process of getting you prepared yeah. to perform that's where it's that's where everything is made at in the weight room the training the eating right that's where you really start to develop like who you want to be yeah. you yeah. know what i'm saying you go out there and you perform not only for yourself, but for your family. Okay. So I thought, I was like, man, like, what's a good name? I couldn't think of nothing, bro. I was <laughs> brainstorming one day. Yeah. I was writing stuff down. And how this, how I came about Athlete U, I was on Facebook one day. And I seen this person. He had Athlete U, too, as well. But he had his LLC directly in South Carolina. Okay. But in my mind, I was thinking, like, man, I might want to buy this from him. You know what I'm saying? So I hit him up on Facebook. We was talking. I was like, man, you know. He's like, to be honest with you, he's like, you can come up with Athlete U too as well. Hey. You just gotta have it registered in the state of Florida. Okay. So one of my uh, closest people that I play with in yeah. the league, his name is Omar Bowden. Uh, we played um, against each other uh, in the NFL. He had played for the Denver Broncos cool. for a little bit. He won the Super Bowl and, cool. and stuff. So I follow him on Instagram. So he's really big into fitness. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's from Cali. So, you know, they different breeds out there. So he's, <laughs> yeah. you know, and technology out there is big. Yeah. So, you know, him being a good, good people, he had an opportunity to uh, help me out. Yeah. I went through LegalZoom, went through LegalZoom, got all the stuff. I came up, I said, I'm going to come up with Athlete U. I came up with everything. Uh, I had my first logo. It was cool for an intro. Then I got to met some people. I got uh, all the stuff, and I got it really professionally looked. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I like this. Like, yeah. this is something I want to build. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So I always That's wanted to up. be able to, like, and one, one day, not just me starting my camps at this school, I also want to have an opportunity to have my own business athlete's gym. That's what's you know up. what I'm saying? So For I made, athletes, yeah, yeah. So I made my business to where, in the near future, when I'm more established with my program, yeah. like I'm able to hire people to work for me. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. that wants to be career into being trainers and stuff and training athletes. Nah, that's how sure. I made that. I want to touch. You talked a little bit about like your mentors um, in the NFL. The you know guy who played for the Denver Broncos. I want to touch a little bit about like your toughest matchups um, that you matched up in the NFL while you were there while you were playing for you know the Seahawks and in your early your early career. Oh man, my first game, uh, like real game game one. Yeah. Was 2012, man. Um, I can't even remember who we was playing. It was so <laughs> surreal. I was like, man, like, I'm in this big stadium. Yeah, it was a lot I'm of like, different. I had to juice myself up. Yeah. I was like, man, I belong here. Like, <laughs> I really belong here. But inside, I had butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my stomach was hurting. 
And I was like, man, I was just like, man, just go out here and just have fun. Nerves, right? And like, Nerves. but to be honest with you, like, I just enjoyed the process really because a lot of players that I played with in college was in the league. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? So yeah. I played SEC football. Yeah. So like, you know, I can list so many Eric Berry, uh, Julio Jones, Odell, Odell Beckham. They was young, look like two years younger when I was a senior. Yeah. Him and Jarvis, they was like freshmen. I mean, I played against Cam Newton, Tim Tebow, man, Percy Harvin, yeah. AJ Green, Matt Stafford. I mean, you can name it. Like lots of legends, man. So many people. So yeah. a lot of those people, mostly every game that we would play. Mostly had those players from from SEC. SEC, SEC. You know what I'm saying? SEC's big in the NFL for sure. What's the major differences between college and NFL? You would say professionalism. Like these are people's livelihoods and jobs. Mm -hmm. So people that are been in the league for a while, like that's their life. Yeah. So they they that's serious. Take it serious. <laughs> like really serious. <laughs> yep. And most of those. Most of the veterans know how the game goes. Like every year, they're drafting, draft, 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 draft. We get older and older and older. Eventually, if you're not a starter, you know you either playing special teams or you ain't in the league. Okay. Like you gotta okay. find some way to get on the field. You know what I'm saying? That was the biggest thing. Me being taught at a young age, like when I was at Kentucky, even though I was a starter, I still played all special teams. Okay. Just because you never know how never know. how you're gonna be valued when you go to the to league NFL. or even yeah. where you're gonna get drafted. Yeah. And I felt like for me over the four years that I had at Kentucky, when you look at my statistics, I was one of the best safeties in the country. You feel what I'm saying? So I felt like for me, confident wise, like I I was with the best of the best. That's what's so up. I felt like, but with college, every, it's politics. Yeah. I know how politics go. Yeah. And in Kentucky at the time, like we was the bottom of the borough of the yeah. SEC schools. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But I, when you look at me statistically, I was right there with the best safeties and the, in the, the country. Best the best, yep. You know what yep. I'm saying? So, I feel like I should have been drafted higher, but everything happens for a reason, man. It was all God's plan, for real. For sure, man. For sure. What's your, it's probably our last question before I let you go, man. Your best advice for the youth or anybody who wants to, you know, possibly be in your position. You know, this doesn't have to, they don't have to be in the NFL. Wanna, they don't have to want to play in the NFL, but what's your best advice for anybody, I guess? My best advice is go for it, man. Like, no, you know, growing up as a kid, I was always a person to have to prove myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My dad always implemented this thing in me since I was a kid. He's like, man, son, just be patient. You know, the cream always rises to the top. So I was always the underdog. I always had to prove myself that I can compete with everybody out here. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I never let nobody tell me I couldn't do nothing. I never let nobody tell me like, nah, Winston, you're not good enough. Yeah. Oh, I ain't good enough? All right, I'm gonna show you I'm not good enough. That was always my mindset. Yeah. So my dad built like that competitiveness in me. I used to cry all the time. Yeah. I didn't like getting hit. Yeah. I wanted to score every, every time. Like, so when I see my kids, I see myself. That's what's up. So when I see that, it's my job to implement that same instillment that my father did. Tense so up. I yeah. want for the youth, man, go for it. Yeah. Now you guys got the resources, like the future is y'all's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wish I can go back to be the younger me in this generation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I would have had it. I would have had it. I would have had everything that these, the LeBron James son. Yeah, yeah I would have had that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? saying? I would, cause my parents would have, they sacrificed a lot for me to be able to be in this position. Yeah. So I gotta give everything to glory to God and to my parents and the people that helped me along the way. Like this school coming from Winburn, all the sacrifices, all the stuff I done been through, things I've been through in my whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To get to me to this point. But you know, make a long story short, I hold this, I hold Lexington, bro, like eight five nine. I got a tattooed on yes, me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm yes, gonna show y'all. Look, yes, a five. I got an eight five nine boy. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like Put I really, on. I really meant that. Like yeah. that's, like this is like I'm part of the city. Like I'm proud to say that now, but I always shied away from it. Right. I always wanted to keep a humble mindset. Okay. But now it's like my oats is soaked in the city. That's what's you know up, what I'm saying? Man. So like, yeah. you know. If I die, I'm a legend. You feel what I'm saying? That's yeah. how I feel. That's good. 
like just because that's that's I've, how it should be i've man. created yeah. so much and i've accomplished so much in a little time yeah with no with little amount of resources yeah so i feel like i'm a legend in this city nobody can't tell me nothing feel nobody like, can tell me nothing yeah. like I deserve to be a Hall of Fame here. Yeah. Like I deserve to have my jersey retired. Of course. Because I've done things that most people ain't done in this city. Yeah. So it's my job, it's my duty, it's my opportunity to give back one way or another. Because if I'm not gonna do it, who else? Yeah, you. you only, know what I'm saying. I feel like you're only getting started, man. You, you're still pretty young. You still got dreams. Yeah, I know, man. So it's like I'm actually so. excited for the future, man. So yeah. I just take it one day at a time, man. Like I pour. Everything that I will pour in somebody else's child, pour in my kids. That's what's up. So whatever I teach my children, I teach somebody else's kids. And I'm going to give it to you raw because it's how it's supposed to be. It out. What's next for you, Winston? Um, what's the, you can go short term, long term. What's next since we're on What's Next podcast? What's next for you? Man, what's next is, man, continuing to build Athlete U brand. Yep. You know, um, really still implementing myself with, the community uh, where I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and also here. So just coming back during the summer camp gave me an opportunity to be able to network, man. Yeah. I, I had an opportunity to meet you. Yeah, you know, of course, uh, that's networking, man. Right? circumstances, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But uh, with that, man, I'm trying to develop um, camps here yeah. every year in my hometown. Yeah. Um, I'm still, uh, right now, I'm still working on getting my, uh, my license certification for uh, uh, personal training. Okay. So I just want to have that under my belt. Awesome. You know, um, you know, I am an alumni not only here at Lexington Catholic High School, but also the University of Kentucky. Yeah. So after uh, I retired and everything, I went back to school to get yeah. my degree. Yeah. So I ended up uh, getting my degree in 2018. So That's good. Um, I ended up getting my uh, bachelor's degree in uh, agriculture communications and bachelor's of science. Okay. Okay. So. Um, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do after football, man. I just kind of became a full-time father, just taking care of my kids, just want to be around them and stuff. And yeah. I kind of want to give myself a mental break. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, the biggest thing is just like transitioning from playing sports your whole life yeah. to like real reality. Yeah. You know, and like, un unfortunately, you know, my mom passed away in 2016. Yeah. And that was a big uh, implement in my life. And, you know, um, I set out a year. Um, I had suffered an injury. Um, I got like reports about, you know, everything. And I just felt like God had different plans for me. I think football for me was the start of okay. something greater than myself. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I gave back to the youth give back and I, I felt like you know it was God's timing you feel me always and I always. didn't want to rush nothing yeah and I felt like I wanted to be able to network I wanted to be able to build my own create my own took my time with it I never wanted to rush something you yeah, know what I'm saying God's like, timing man That's my dad how always be. my dad taught me that since a young age he always taught me I never forget like even when you know he's gone from this earth I luckily I still have a parent. I still have my dad. Like he's my biggest role model. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like he's reason why I am who I am today. Yeah, today. But he'll tell you like, nah, you made yourself, son. But in reality, like, man, that man is like I look at my dad, and my father like a superhero. That's what's you up. You know, he's like Superman to me. Man. You know what I'm saying? I think his only weakness is me and my sister and his <laughs> grandkids. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, um without him, man, I wouldn't be who I am. So pops. I appreciate you, man. We still got a lot more work to do. <laughs> I love that. It's been an honor to have you on this podcast. Oh, yeah, to be I able to sit across it, from you, hear your journey. Hey, this is um, fun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get my own, man. Yeah, like, man. I'm, I'm going to tune in if you, whenever you yeah. get yours, man. Start your podcast. It, I'm for sure tuning in, man. Yeah, but, for sure. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be be able to sit across from you, like I said, man. And I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to be watching your journey, man. Thank I'm you, gonna man. I'm going to be watching your journey with your athletes. I you. appreciate it. And, man, like, it's been a pleasure, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Hit that like and subscribe button, please. This is Winston Guy. Make Thank sure you, you follow him on all social medias. Check out his athletes. You, I'll put up in the little description below. You just hit that. You know, um, that's his tag. So just make sure you go follow it on Instagram, Twitter, on all social media accounts. Um, besides that. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hit that like and subscribe button, like I said. Even comment on it. And we'll have great episodes like this coming. More episodes like this coming on where we sit across some great individuals like Winston Guy. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for your support. Episodes and exclusive content. Subscribe to What's Next with Rio.